Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and before we get into today's video well I'm just going to remind you the three books that are on sale drink tea and read the paper if you're a green belt and a black belt and you want simple instruction on how to apply your skill design of experiments for 21st century engineers and finally a statistical process control for small batch production. They are all available from lulu.com and the links are in the video below. Welcome to the latest video newsletter and in this video what we're going to take a look at is the idea of automatic process feedback because I recently put up a video where I was talking about mistake proofing uh, devices and I received a comment attached to that video where someone said you forgot the idea of automatic process feedback Paul that's a mistake proofing device and I sent them a comment back saying uh, as far as I'm concerned automatic fe process feedback is one of the worst things you can ever do. If I go to a client and we have a problem with a process and he's got this thing attached to it, I normally tell him to switch it off first as last. Okay, so we're gonna talk about what automatic process feedback might be doing and why I wanna turn it off. Um, and maybe talk about what you know what good process feedback should look like um, and maybe talk about something called process feed forward rather than feedback now what we're going to do in order to understand the idea of process feedback is to get ourselves a nice simple process a nice simple process that is a random number generator it's this thing, it's a dice. Um, because your processes are random number generators. That's what they do. So let's do the usual input output diagram that I like to use when I'm talking about processes. So in this case, we have a dice process. I'm gonna roll the dice. And I'm going to give us some feedback. I'm going to give us some control. So this is, we're going to call this the offset. Now, of course, the offset could be manual, but we could loop the output to the offset and let the offset automatically adjust every time we get a result. So here we are. We get a result. Now, the reason I use a dice is because we know what a dice is going to do. We know what it does as a random number generator. So, you know, the, the process typically is going to have boundaries, one and six. It's going to bounce around within that window, and we know that. And we know what's right about the dice. So whilst the dice is doing its natural thing, we would, we would naturally leave it alone. We wouldn't touch it at all. Now let's assume for us uh, with our dice that, let's have a think, I'm gonna say three, four, and five is a good result, okay? Three, four, and five is a good result. And that maybe numbers outside of that might be rejects. But look, we understand the dice. We understand what it does. We understand its pattern. And whilst it's doing its pattern, we shouldn't touch it. We shouldn't touch it at all. So what I've done here, look, I've generated some random numbers. I've asked my computer to generate a discrete distribution between the numbers one and six. And we've got a graph here of, effectively, we have a graph of a process. And your process might behave just like this. So let's think first of all about manual type feedback. 
So let's take a look at the graph and think about how feedback might work. So here's our process. Um, it's, you know, it's just a dice between one and six. We can see, look, that the numbers top out at one and six, and it's a random number generator, just like any process, but it is a random number generator that we understand. But if we allow incorrect adjustment of this process, we could make this process infinitely worse than it currently is. Now we've said three, four, and five are good results. Therefore, if we get if we get ones, twos, and sixes, we're going to get defects. And of course, sometimes the operator thinks that they can help correct this problem. And so they decide to use the offset to make process adjustments. Well, look, let's take a look. Look at this random number generator, look. It's at one here, then the next result, it flies all the way up to six. Maybe the operator, hmm, maybe the operator could put some minus numbers in here. Maybe, well, wow, the process moved all of six units. Maybe we'll put an offset of minus three in there. But look, the process would have naturally just meandered just by luck al alone down to one all of its own accord. It didn't need any help to go back to the lowest point. But now we have an offset of minus three, of course. This number is going to go all the way down here and it's going to be at minus three. And at that point, the operator thinks, hmm, I'm now, oh, two, three, four, my, I'm, I'm actually five outside of my tolerance. Maybe I ought to, maybe I ought to adjust it and now I'll have the offset at plus two to bring it up to my bottom tolerance. Because look, process, what does it do? Well, it meanders again and then it goes and it wants to deliver one of these data points. Well, now this data point is going to be up here, up at eight. So we were going to get variability, which was between one and six. But now look, because we've let the operator put offsets in, we go in from minus three to plus eight. Wow, that went well, didn't it? Now, of course, in order to prevent this nonsense, what you would do is you would give the operator an SPC chart and the SPC chart would have rules. You would take a picture of the natural process behavior. And while the process is behaving naturally, what would the operator do? They would drink tea and read the paper. They would keep their hands off the process. Now, we can obviously stop an operator. We can lock them out with passwords and things like that, which is a great thing to do. An operator never needs the adjustment password, but you could lock the operator out of using the offset feature here to try to prevent them from making the problem worse. But now someone's asking me the question, shouldn't we have an automatic feedback system? Well, if I don't want the operator to touch it, I don't want to give it to a robot and they'll make the bloody adjustment automatic because now the robot is going to adjust every time. It's going to go bang, 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 make the process so much worse. Now, if you gave the automatic feedback process the SPC rules, so if you had some SPC rules that you built into the logic, somehow in the automatic feedback, so this thing's going back and automatically adjusting here, then possibly that might work. The only thing that works here, as far as I'm concerned, is something that I would call feeding forward. So somehow the system knows the status of one of the inputs before it hits the machine. So for example, I've seen this in a press shop where they measured, we had a coil of steel and the steel was coming off 
going into a, a press tool. Like this, and as the steel came through the press tool, they were measuring here. And then what they were doing, they were adjusting something to do with the, the force that the press would operate. Now that wasn't feedback, that was feed forward because the press could see the goods that were coming at it and it adjusted an appropriate adjustment and fed forward. Now that's okay, that's okay. But that isn't the way most processes work. You see, this technique is like driving a car. If you think of the way we drive a car, we constantly adjust the car. But that's okay, because I can see the corner that's about to turn left. It's feed forward, and I turn left with the corner. In most processes, what you're doing, you're looking at the, at the road you've just progressed through. And you should have just turned left, but now you've mounted the pavement. So what do you do? You turn left to deal with a left-hand turn that you've just gone through. Well, maybe you're on a really twisty, turny road and the road's about to go right now, but you've turned left. You're always looking backwards. Feedback. It's too late. The, the product is gone. If you put automatic feedback onto a system like this, you will typically make the whole process worse. Feedback, automatic feedback, it's like real time. Everybody's obsessed with real time data collection because we think we're gonna feed back and correct something. What we're gonna do is wind on the dials and make the whole process worse if we're not careful. So, automatic feedback, the first thing I would do, piece of advice, if you've got a process that's a problem, first thing I would probably tell you to do is to either switch it off or go and look at the logic that it's using. If it's using sensible logic somehow, maybe what it's doing is collecting average data and it's only when the average gets shifted that it will make an adjustment. Or even better, maybe it's collecting median data and it's only if the median shifts that it makes a correction. Those types of logic systems built into the software might work. But typically, if you, if you loop an automatic feedback round onto a process and make it automatically do this. My book's called Drink Tea and Read the Paper. Why is that? Because one thing I want you to do is to take your hands off. If you set your process up, keep it under control, and keep your hands off and drink tea and read the paper, you will make more money. Typically, you do not need automatic feedback making the whole process worse.